QuickBooks Online 2022 Navigation Overview. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. We're online in our browser. We're typing in QuickBooks Online test drive to find the free test drive file. We're going to go down and click on the test drive file. It's in the Intuit, the owner. I'm going to verify we're not a robot and continue. I'm also going to go to the free 30 day trial that we opened up that you might not have open yet just to get a difference in terms of the look and feel they currently have. In both of these, I'm going to scroll in as we saw in a previous presentation, holding control, scrolling in. So I'm at 125% of the view. I'm going to do that over here, holding control, scrolling in. The first thing we want to point out here is the ever changing nature of the website, meaning the QuickBooks will always be updating their online version to get the latest look and feel of it. And you can see them basically doing an A-B type of testing here as we go, which is if you hit the cog drop down, they've got this switch between the business view and the accounting view. So if you make that, if you hit that little button, it's going to switch and adjust the view. Now in the test drive version, there's not too much change between the two views and the look and feel. But if you go into the latest version that we purchased in the 30 day sample file, you see there's a bigger change on the left hand side. And you can, you can just imagine what they're trying to do, of course, is have that toggle between the two, get feedback as to whether this new change, this new look and feel looks better to most people. If it does, you would think that they would lean more towards that as being the default. So you can see that you can have quite drastic changes to the online website that are going to happen over time as they try to optimize the look and feel for different users, as different users have different needs, as users use this thing on a website, possibly they're gonna be looking to mobile app kind of user userness as well. And so they're always gonna be constantly uh, adjusting this. And we, as users, are just along for the ride. We don't have any real uh, say in terms of what those kind of changes are gonna be. That's drastically different than the desktop version. If you look at the desktop version, it's been in essence the same with these drop downs up top that have been there. If you remember when Microsoft Word had these drop downs before they moved to the ribbon up top, the, the same thing with the QuickBooks and they haven't moved from that from a long time. It's very static. Whereas if you go to the, to the online version here, you're going to have these optimizations and changes all the time, which you may not like or you may uh, not like as much as much. But that's just the way the website, you know, development type of thing is going to work. However, the accounting side of things is still the double entry accounting system that, you know, is not going to change. So, and also, even with the QuickBooks normal kind of functions, which are driven by forms that we'll learn about, uh, those things aren't going to change as well. What will generally change is just the look of it. And you're going to say, OK, where did you put the thing that I want to do at this point in time? Did you replace the actual terminology with a button? How are you now formatting these items? And so it's usually something that you're going to say, I trust QuickBooks is trying to do something better here. And they're putting a different icon. And I'm just going to figure out where they put, you know, the thing that I want to find is trusting that they will still have it because they're still going to be using just in essence, the double entry accounting system. Okay, so that said, if you're going to compare, I'm going to do some comparisons between the online version and the desktop version just so you can get a difference between you know the layouts we saw before that the desktop version usually opened up to the home page here but once you're used to the home page you can kind of remove the home page a lot of people really like the flow chart however and the online version has started to kind of adopt this flow chart as well and then they have the open windows on the left hand side typically there's our open windows these are allowing us to toggle back and forth between things things and usually once you get used to the version, you got, you get to everything through the drop downs. And this is where you find all the places that you want to go and everything that you want to enter into the system. That's the general layout with the desktop version. If I go to the online version, you can think about that uh, drop down up top as now being on the side window. So we have the side window that usually has these arrows, which they've changed. You know, if you want the newer version, I'll take a look at that in a second. But you've got these windows on the left hand side that are then going to be the pop ups up to the left hand side that you can click on. And then you've got your new button, which is your drop down up top that gives you your categories. And then you've got your cog up top over here. So all the stuff in the middle is not usually thought of as kind of like your navigation area. 
although they put some kind of information in here that could be useful when you first go into it and they, they started to put like a home page uh, type of flowchart in there as well but usually this middle area is your display area and then when you want to go to places you're usually going to go to the places on the left hand side tab the new button up top which might just be a plus button as they start to change their formatting whatever they do with it it used to be a plus at one time now it's got a new thing and so on and then you've got your cog over here those are going to be your major kind of uh, navigation areas you can also see the differences when they're trying to when they're trying to toggle back and forth between an accountant view and say a business view one of the things they're thinking about is the terminology you can see it's called transactions over here and if i go to the accountant view they're going to call it they're going to call it uh, banking i believe and so you can see one of one of their things that they're kind of going back and forth between is what's the terminology do i want to use and do i want to use that terminology that's going to be most appropriate and and something that's most comfortable for non-accountants or terminology that's most appropriate for accountants and obviously quickbooks has people that they're trying to please in in both markets they also want to think, think about how much of their terminology do they want to keep uh pulling over from the their old system which is the quickbooks desktop and kind of utilize those same kind of concepts in the new system and how much they want to kind of break away as they go into a web-based type of system so you can see all these things uh, playing out as they start to make some of these adjustments but again the underlining accounting of it is going to be the same because it's the double entry accounting system so when you're entering new transactions into the system you will generally be using this one way you could get to most transactions that you enter on a day-to-day -day, uh, process will be into the new item up top if you have accounting background you're you're used to how transactions are entered the debits and credits the accounts that are actually impacted those things are done in accounting software typically with data input forms so we want to think about the data input forms and try to make those data input forms as easy as possible so someone without accounting background can simply open up the appropriate form do the data input and the accounting system will then apply the transaction you can find most of those data input forms here you'll notice that up top we've got the customers the supplies the employees and other if you're used to the quickbooks desktop version that looks very similar if i go to the home page on the desktop version to the three cycles the vendor cycle the customer cycle and the employees cycle so in other words it's it's nice and useful to kind of group your transactions in cycles meaning when when i basically have revenue i can call it the revenue cycle my customer cycle or my accounts receivable cycle in essence that's my revenue generation side of things what are my list of forms that are going to record the transactions i'm going to invoice people if i if i'm in the type of business that invoices them i will go into this in much more detail in future presentations we'll start to look at these cycles in more detail but in general you'd invoice them you're going to receive the payment you might have an estimate depending on the process a credit memo if that takes place and then the sales receipts another type of form of invoicing refunds and so on when you're talking about the vendor cycle used to be called the vendor cycle people that you're paying they're calling it here suppliers i think vendors is kind of an maybe they thought of it as an older terminology that's not quite as useful people that were paying are were the vendors but they're calling it suppliers now which is same kind of thing that's going to be us paying for stuff like that we we need expenses and possibly uh, inventory and so on so we got the expenses check bill pay pay bills are going to be the type of data input forms and then the employees cycle which you can think about as basically the payroll cycle and then we have the other stuff which doesn't fit directly into a particular cycle but are our common type of data input type of transactions the deposit the transfer and then journal entries which is the type of form you would use if no other form was typically applicable so the general idea with the data input is that i'm going to use a data input form if i can if i can't use a data input form then i'm typically going to use the check register if cash is impacted and if i can't use either of those two i'm going to default to a general journal just a journal entry so you can also get to that those same kind of things in in basically the centers so i would call these kind of items on the left hand side in essence the centers so in other words if i go to the desktop version we used to call them the vendor center which breaks out our who we owe money to and the customer center breaks out our customers information 
and then the employee center. So you can you can kind of think about that same same concept here, but they got them named a little bit differently. Sales is the item here. So you've got the dropout. That would be like our customer center. So if I go into the sales item, then you've got the same items that are here with this little arrow as are going to be up top, overview, sit all sales, customers, and, and the invoices, and then the customers. So here's the customer. So this would be similar to the customer center and, and adding the products. We'll talk more about that later. And then we've got the expenses, which would be kind of like the vendor center. So if I go into the vendor center, then we've got the expenses related to them and the suppliers, which would be basically our vendors who we're paying to. And then we've got the payroll center down here, which is going to be our payroll information. We'll talk more about payroll in the future, which would be kind of like our employee center. And then we have our reports. This is where we're going to be generating our reports, the primary two reports, the balance sheet and the income statement. We'll talk more about them later. We've got our taxes, sales tax that we're going to set up and possibly payroll taxes that we need to be set up. If we need to track mileage, we've got our mileage information and then we've got our accounting information. The main thing here being our chart of accounts, which is going to be the list of accounts that's going to be set up typically from QuickBooks when you first set up the QuickBooks file. We also have our banking information up top which will help us out with our with our banking stuff and if, if we have cash if we have bank feeds set up then this will also be an area we'll talk about with bank feeds which we'll get into uh, in future presentations you can collapse this with the carrot with this uh, hamburger i believe they call it on the left hand side and then we also have the cog which is your other major area that you would be taking a look at uh, when you're doing when you're when you're adjusting things this is not the area that you would go into for normal day-to-day -day input forms but things that you need to change for like your company accounts and setting managing the users uh, custom forms so if you're setting up custom form kind of information you could get to the chart of accounts here which you could also get to in the accounting area quickbooks labs there's like new stuff that they're testing out lists uh, this is a terminology, we'll get in that in more detail later, but you got all lists, product lists, which you can also find in the sales area, uh, recurring transactions. So if you're going to like make transactions that recur, memorizing them in essence, attachments, uh, custom fields, tags, currencies would be here. These are kind of like preferences. And we'll talk a lot more about preferences in the second half of the course when we, when we start a new company file. Because typically when you start a new company file, that's when you're going to really get into setting the preferences for that particular company. And when you're going into a company file that has already been set up, like you're working as an employee, for example, then the company preferences are what they are. And you're going to practice the navigation. So if you want to talk more about the preferences, take a look at the second half of the course. And we'll go into a lot of these in more detail as we set up a new company file. And tools, order checks import data import uh, out uh, outside data export data reconcile budgeting which you could find reconcile else in the accounting to budgeting audit and so on profile feedback and privacy so those are your major navigation tools obviously you got your little bell that will give you information you've got your help item and your search item uh, up top and then your display field will be in the future let's just take a quick look at that on our new looking field over here and we'll have the same kind of items. Now, remember, if you hit the drop down right now, they're kind of A, B testing between this with the little icons on the left hand side and switching to the accounting view, which is what they what they have had in the past. So you can imagine what they're doing right now. You got people that have been using QuickBooks and they're like, I'm used to this little drop down side thing right here. That's what I like. And then the new the new people that are going, hey, you know, but if I'm on my phone, I need icons and I, I want a fancier little look and feel over here and they're probably toggling over an a b testing between this more traditional look and possibly this new look with the icon and so if they move over to this then not not a big deal it's going to have basically in essence the same stuff right you still got your new button up top customers and now they switched it back to vendors over here and we've got the employees and the other so it's okay i see you got, you're toggling back and forth with your terminology you got your flow chart up top it's not exactly like the flowchart for the desktop version. So I will like look at this flowchart because I think this flowchart is is nice to to look at. And notice, again, if I go back to the desktop version and look at these forms, 
this desktop version has been here for like ever. <laughs> like, you know, there's, it has, these forums aren't, aren't, haven't really changed much at all with the new, with the new version over here, even in the on, even as they went online and so on. Those aren't normally the things that they're changing. They're just changing kind of how to get to them and the look and feel of it. So they, I believe they, I would assume that they got some feedback that people kind of like that flow chart. So they put a, a flow chart of their own. I don't know if they'll change this. They could change the, the feel of that. That's one of the things that they've kind of updated here. So we will look at that flow chart in a bit more detail as we look at the cycles going forward. But you got that in the home page. You got the business overview on the left hand side and you'll notice the drop up. The drop downs don't happen now. Instead, you get this new window and the icons on the left hand side, which if you hover over them, will we'll go into them. So it's a little bit more fancy kind of thing. And then in here, you've got your business overview, which gives you kind of some general information. This used to be what showed up like right at the beginning when you went in there. But to most people, you know, this stuff is fancy looking, but, you know, it's not giving you a lot of, you know, generally, if you want the reports, you go into the reports and so on and so forth. So this is like really cool stuff from a programming standpoint. I'm not sure it gives you a whole lot of information that you're going to use on a glance that you wouldn't generally go to your reports and figure out on the report so they kind of took that away and they put instead up front this general flow chart which again from a computer fancy stuff's popping up and graphs flowing out there isn't quite as cool looking but i think most people like it better because you got your flow chart but in any case you, you could still find the fancy overview thing in here then you've got your cash flow another kind of fancy item and then you've got your reports which is where most like accountants would typically go <laughs> to get to the, your actual reports, which would be your balance sheet and your profit and loss here. And then you've got your banking on the left-hand side. So you've got your banking, QuickBooks checking, you've got the capital and the business credit and so on. And then you've got the get paid and pay. So again, look at the terminology there and then they try to get rid of, you know, just with an icon, but get paid and paid, not very like formal terminology, <laughs> but that would be of course the money coming in and the money going out. So you're talking about with money coming in, you got your customer uh, kind of information here. So that would be kind of like your customer center. If, if you're talking desktop terminology, you've got your invoices, the items that have been taking place. Obviously, there's no data currently in, this, in the payment at the, in the system at this time because it's just a new company file. file. Uh, payment links, times, products, and services. And then you've got the pay. So this would be money going out, which would typically be called like the vendor center which then they called the suppliers in tracking the information there. So they kind of consolidated a little bit instead of having two centers, they kind of try to pack those two things together and get pay and pay in that very informal language. And then you've got your commerce tab on the left-hand side, and then you've got your payroll, which would be your employee center here in the employee center. We'll talk more about payroll in the future, but you would you know, find your information that you would assume to find here. Then you've got your bookkeeping information. That's going to give you your chart of accounts, which is kind of like the foundation. I believe that was under accounting uh, before. You've got your rules, live bookkeeping, my accountant. And then you've got your taxes information, which would be your sales tax and your payroll taxes. So notice that pretty much the whole thing is pretty much the same. If I, if I hit the cog here and I go to the accounting view, now you've got the dashboard instead of instead of the home page which they put that flow chart into now and then the business overview on the right hand side which has all the fancy stuff which used to be the default kind of thing fancy but not exactly that useful stuff over here for most people that just are looking to make their financials and then they got their banking information in in this format the banking up top the app the rules and so on the sales which would be basically the uh, customer center and then you got your items up top in this format uh, the the all sales the invoices the payments and then here's your customers for like the customer center your cash flows then cash flows on uh, the overview and the quickbooks checking and the planner the expenses which would in essence be the vendor center you got your expenses and your vendors your projects and then your payroll tab so in essence again you can see this is just kind of uh, the surface items that they're kind of playing with in terms of terminology icons and names and just basically layout uh, but the underground work in terms of the forms double entry accounting system the same